Hey guys, I'm gonna do a quick video on how to install NodeCode as well as create a simple program. Um, the program is actually gonna run on the same machine that we installed NodeCode onto. Um, it could run on as many machines as you have in your home. Uh, but once you have the idea of creating one simple program, it's very trivial to spread that program to other machines. But we'll do other videos on that. Um, so first, to get started, uh, open up your web browser and go to, I'm already actually at NodeCode, go to nodecode.io. Uh, we're going to go to Downloads, and we're just going to grab the uh, complete installer. It's a pretty small install. We're just going to go ahead and run that straight from here. Um, just go ahead and run it anyways. Uh, walk through the installer, the, uh, of course, read over the license. Um, there's nothing crazy in there. Uh, so for the setup type, they all pretty much do the same thing. Um, the only reason that we have, uh, we have a custom here where you can select the different components. So that's gonna be useful for a reinstall or if we upgrade just one of the components, but go ahead and just install uh, all of the components. Um, they're all actually necessary. Okay, so it's gonna install three components. Now the main component to node code is the hub. Uh, the hub is, is kind of the brains of the operation, the brains and the memory actually. I'm gonna start the hub first. And you'll see that the hub actually goes through a bunch of steps of creating a, a little database that it uses. Uh, once you see um, hub started, then you're ready to go and you can start up next the, uh, the agent. Go ahead and give it access uh, to the private network. So the agent has a few different responsibilities. One of those is to monitor the node code programs that we've uh, installed remotely. And uh, that way we don't have to log into every single machine and constantly check to make sure that the programs are running. Um, it can also stop those programs and it'll let us know if it hasn't heard from one of the programs in a while. And it'll either uh, try to restart it or at the very least send us a notification so that if we're halfway around the world, uh, we can try to restart the, the Node Code program uh, remotely. So Node Code Studio is where you go to orchestrate and configure all of this. So I'm gonna open this up. So the first thing we're gonna do is add the hub that we just started to this user interface. Now you can have multiple hubs all around the world. Uh, this hub just happens to be running on the same machine. So the first thing you're gonna do to add a hub is just click on the uh, orange plus button. So we're gonna actually leave the hub settings the way they are. Uh, the hub name can be whatever you want. You can leave main hub if you're just gonna have one hub. Uh, the hub address uh, with localhost just means that the hub is running on the same machine as the uh, user interfaces. That's fine for this demo, so we're just gonna click OK. So now you can see we've added the main hub. We're gonna click back onto it. We're gonna log in. So right now, there's only uh, a single user for NodeCode. Now this is gonna be changed in future versions uh, to allow multiple users. So for now, just click on the check mark. You'll log in, and uh, once you're logged in, you'll see that the status at the top has changed to logged in. And you can actually look at your uh, hub console and it'll show you that uh, user node code has logged in. So, okay, so node code is installed, we're connected, we're making good time. Now, what is this whole program thing about? Well, a program is basically just a collection of connections. Well, what does that mean? So node code can run on devices all around the world and you wanna be able to connect these devices. Um, the difficult thing is there's a lot of different devices and those devices have a lot of different capabilities. Some have cameras, some have speakers, some have uh, GPIO inputs, some are able to talk to your AC, some are connected to the web. So what Node Code tries to do is to break out all these different capabilities into things called services. And a service is really just kind of like a plugin. Uh, it just happens to be a plugin that's distributed amongst a bunch of different types of devices. Um, so, the first thing that we need to do before we access any, any of uh, this computer's functionality is to go download a service. Now, the services are all available also on NodeCode. Um, they're not available in the download section. They're available in a separate section called services. So, there's a small number of services now, but the number of services as well as the functionality of the services will continually be getting better over time. Uh, as well as different platforms. You'll see that uh, one service will have many different downloads for the different platforms. 
Now, if you don't have one of the platforms, you don't have to download the uh, service pack. So a service pack is really the version of the service for a specific device. For instance, here we have a Windows machine, so we're gonna download the Windows time. Now, if we also have a Linux machine, we can download both of these, install it using Node Code Studio, regardless of the platform type, and the hub will distribute each of these to the right platform. So for this simple example, I'm gonna create a program that allows us to create a view, and then within that view, we can send text over the wire into a Twitter service. The Twitter service will send it to Twitter, and then no code will open up a browser to show the actual tweet. To start the web browser, I'm gonna download the first service, which is system. So the system service allows us to do things that you would normally do at a system level or a command prompt level, such as uh, starting, starting an app. So it just turns out that uh, Firefox has a nice uh, command line interface, so you can you can pass in the Firefox uh, exe location with the URL, and it'll open right up to the that page. So I'm going to download uh, the Windows Service Pack for System. Um, we're going to do some text manipulation, so I'm going to download the Text Service for Windows, and I'm also going to download the Twitter Service Pack. So I'm also going to download the uh, transforms as well. It's always handy. Um, so now that we've downloaded that, we can go into uh, the service packs screen, go to add. Now these are all going to be in the um, downloads folder. I'm just going to highlight all of them. We can add them all at once. Now these are all being sent to the hub, to the central repository for the hub to distribute later to the right platforms. So we're basically done uh, installing the service pack on the node code system. So now that it's there, we can start to create our program. Now I told you that our program is gonna require some sort of input, some sort of human input. To create any sort of human input to interact with this system, we have to create a view. So you can imagine node code being a bunch of uh, services, node code services running on different uh, platforms all around the world. At some point, we saw the need for the human to get in there and say, hey, between these two points, I wanna be able to interact. I wanna be able to see the data flowing over this data stream, or I wanna actually push my own data, whether it's text or a button signal, or uh, the temperature of an AC, I wanna push that into the data stream. All of that is done either sending or receiving through a view. Now you might be asking, well, how can you predict every view that I wanna create? We can't, but we can give you the tools to create as many different views as you want. So what we do is we give you a designer and we give you a toolbox full of different view elements. Now the view elements have different types like numbers, text, or just signals. And you take the one that you need, drag it and drop it, and then you're able to wire it up to the services that we create later. Now, I feel like I'm getting out of order, but it's important that we do this first so that when we go to the program, this all comes together very quickly. So to create a view, we simply go to the, uh, the views item underneath the main hub. We click on the plus sign. We click on the automatically created view. We're gonna rename this uh, Twitter, whoops, Twitter program. And we're gonna go ahead and give it, let's see, Yeah, we're just, so for this example, we're just gonna get, leave it as one row and one column. So we're just gonna have one big control. And uh, since we're sending text, we're gonna have the uh, text sender element. The text sender is kind of like the text edit, except the text edit sends a signal every time you type. So if you type in your name, if I typed in James, when I hit the J, it would send a J. When I typed in A, it would send J-A. When I typed in M, it would send J-A-M. So for Twitter, we don't actually want to send a tweet for each one of those steps. We want to send it all at one time. So that's why we created the text sender. Now, just like the services, we're going to update the view elements over time. 
Um, you can expect to see different view elements for imaging, videos, uh, all sorts of different things that you normally expect with a user interface. But for now, we're gonna have the simple types such as true, false, numbers, text, and just an empty signal. I'm gonna call this send tweet. Now it's important that you save this because it's not until you save it that it goes to the hub and is available to all the clients that are connected to the hub around the world. So just like the views, you're gonna add a program under the programs menu item under the hub. So this also creates an empty program. We're gonna rename this uh, Twitter program. We're gonna save it. And uh, so I'm gonna get a little, I'm gonna actually expand this to the entire screen here. Cool. So now we're ready to rock and roll. You can see now that we have a program, we have a view, and we have a device to run it on. Now this agent corresponds to this guy right here that we started earlier. Now you can have many different agents. You can have an agent for every device that you have. So we're gonna call this one uh, main PC, and that is basically just this machine. That way we can keep track of all the different agents. So when we go back to the programs, you can see that the device name has updated to uh, main PC. This is great if you have like eight Raspberry Pis, you can say like living room Raspberry Pi, office Raspberry Pi, uh, uh, main server or whatever. So I'm gonna just call this main PC. Since we've already downloaded the service packs that work on this machine, you'll see that every time I drag and drop one of these services, I'll get the little cursor with the plus sign. And that means that this, this service has a service pack that works on this machine. So I'm gonna, uh, just start dragging these to the top. You can see that they're kind of grayed out right now. We'll fix that here in a minute. Okay. And the last one. And now all we do is start the services and the services go through a process of communicating with the hubs, introducing themselves and getting any information back that they need to uh, connect to all the other services. So one by one, we're gonna go down this list and we're just gonna start the services by right clicking, clicking start service. So you can see that the services are popping up on this computer because this is the computer that that agent is running on. Now, if this agent was running on a Raspberry Pi or a remote computer halfway around the world, the same screen would pop up remotely on those machines. So I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna start the text service. I'm just gonna minimize these as they come up. I'm gonna start the transform service and I'm gonna start the uh, Twitter service, all right? So now I'm just gonna expand these and show that they have uh, children underneath. Now these children are called nodes. So nodes are really, they take the, uh, the functionality that the service provides and they create these uh, interfaces that are connectable. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a, um, I'm gonna add the view that we've already uh, created just to kind of give us a starting point. And so you can see that this is a view that we, we designed. You can see that the view element that we had uh, called send tweet is actually available for us to start connecting things with. You can see the little connection point over here. And if I right click and say show, you can see that we have something that we can type text into. Um, okay. So the next step that we're gonna do, we're gonna create a kind of a program for the program. So I'm gonna show you how uh, the system service works. And we're gonna do that by having a static execute node. We're gonna open the properties pane. I'm first gonna rename this node to something that makes more sense later on. And we're just gonna call this start Firefox. So the first thing I need to do is get the actual path to Firefox. And I'm gonna set the actual argument now this works for any program. I just happen to know that Firefox has a nice command line uh, interface to use, which is why I'm using it for this demo, but I'm sure I could have Googled Chrome or uh, uh, Opera or anything else. And they would probably have something that's pretty similar to this. So now that I've set the properties, I'm just gonna hit save. And right off the bat, you can see that we have kind of a, kind of a impedance mismatch between these two node edges. So one of these is a text node going to a 
signal node. Now I'm just gonna show you this so that you know that you can do conversions between the different type of data streams. So in this case, our start Firefox node doesn't really care what the text is that we're sending to uh, Twitter. So we can actually just, uh, we can add a transform that just turns that text into a signal by just removing the text. So to do that, we're gonna add a text to signal uh, converter. And you can see that the colors match up and we just drag that node from that output straight into this input. And then from this output straight into the start Firefox input. And uh, now if we click on the go button, no matter what we type in here, once we hit this, we will see Firefox open up. All right, so now that you see how that's done, we're actually gonna leave this just as it is, and we're gonna add another node to actually send the text straight to Twitter. The first step that we need to do here is tell the Twitter service what it needs to know. So you saw how we set properties on a node. Services can also have properties that are set for all of the nodes. So it's kind of a global property. Every node in the Twitter service is gonna need to know your login and password. So we set that right up, the, right up at the front uh, through the Twitter service. It'll save it and then you don't have to worry about it again. So if you go to uh, the actual uh, installed service, type in your username, your password, and then you save it, and you're done. You're basically logging in by doing that. So now that I've actually already logged into the Twitter service, I can go ahead and add a uh, send public status node to the uh, program canvas. And since this expects text, I can basically just send uh, the text straight into this node without any conversion. So now I'm gonna rewire it so that we open the browser after we send the tweet, not right when I click the button. So to do that, I'm just gonna remove this wire by right-clicking on this connection or the data stream. And then I'm gonna actually send the output of the send public status up here. So that it happens more in a, in, a, in, a, uh, in a series instead of everything happening at once. Either is fine, it's probably gonna be about the same. So I'm gonna open the Twitter program and I'm gonna type in, uh, this was, whoops. This was sent from node code, hashtag node, whoops, it's non code, node code rocks. We hit send, and then we should see our browser open up, and right there we see our tweet. Whoops, keeps doing that. Uh, and there it is. Um, so that's it. Uh, the next video, we'll start showing how to do this where you have multiple devices with different capabilities like the Raspberry Pi with its uh, and GPIO and what you can do with the same type of program. Anyways, thank you for watching as always, and I hope you enjoyed the video.